a couple weeks ago, we had an exciting conversation about a AI tool called Guest Guru, but unfortunately it shut its doors. Now we're looking for something to replace it. Mark Simpson might have that answer for you here on the Fearless Investor Podcast. Hey team fearless, I just want to take a quick break from this podcast to talk about funding your furnishings. If you're listening to the Fearless Investor podcast, then you probably want to do the Airbnb arbitrage model. Reason being, it's a low barrier of entry, right? $10,000, $15,000, $20,000 to buy furniture with someone else's property. And sure, you can use your own bank account or you can raise the money at a low interest rate from a friend or family member. But wouldn't you rather get that money at 0% interest, aka free money? That's what my friends at Pathway Financial can do for you. Pathway Financial helps people like you get 0% interest credit cards so you don't have to have the financial stress of putting down a ton of money up front for your deals. Think about that for a second. How many arbitrage deals could you do if money was not a concern? Well, that could be the exact possibility with Pathway Financial's help. Get a free quote from them today. Go to fearlesskyle.com forward slash pathway financial to find out how much you can get pre-approved for right now. And don't worry, it won't have any impact on your credit score because it's a soft inquiry. So go once again to fearlesskyle.com forward slash pathway financial and get that free quote. Hey, welcome in Team Fearless. And I'm super excited because this podcast was the most value packed podcast I've done in a long time. And no surprise, Mark Simpson was the source of that value. He is a wealth of knowledge from direct bookings to AI tools. And he's talking about all different ways that we can be using something that's not quite guest guru, like we talked about with Ven, the tatted investor, a few weeks back. But good news, there might be something going on with Guest Guru that is going to get it rebooted. Mark's going to talk about that a little bit along with some insight on why it even shut down to begin with. But you're going to want to take some notes. You're definitely going to hear about a lot of different tools that Mark talked about. And we're going to have those all in the show notes. So make sure to go and check out the show notes so you can check out all of these tools that he has. Now let's get to it right now with the Fearless Investor Podcast with Mark Simpson. Hey guys, welcome in. And I'm really excited to have Mark Simpson back again. I think this is uh, podcast number three that we've done together, Mark. Um, so if you've gone, you know, if, if you guys don't know Mark Simpson, first of all, like you're under a rock, we need to get you out from under that rock because he is the man when it comes to direct bookings, but he's also been a huge resource for AI tools here recently, um, which we're going to talk a lot about today. So if you don't know Mark's story, go back, watch or listen to our last or really our original podcast with him. He's got a great story of growing up in the hospitality world with his family. Um, and he, again, is the man for direct bookings, boostly.uk. And we have, especially for those of you that are in the six-figure formula, like you're always asking about direct bookings, Mark is giving us a very generous 15% discount to get your uh, direct booking site set up. So make sure to take advantage of that if you're in the six-figure formula group. If you're listening to this on recording, What's up, Team Fearless? You need to be in the six-figure formula, fearlesskyle.com forward slash 6FF. But without further ado, Mark, really excited to have you on, man. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Good to be back. Hat trick number three. Get yeah. The hat trick coming. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Uh, so I want to talk to you, Mark, about AI. Let's just focus on that today. Um, I was in a room with you with our seven-figure mastermind. And man, the amount of like resources that you had and the number of AI tools. And I had ju we just had our baby and I literally had not even heard of chat GPT yet. I think I was the only one in the room that hadn't like actually dove into it. And I felt like a fool, but and now I do <laughs> because of you. Uh, and I know you're a wealth of knowledge. So why don't you just, first of all, kind of back up, like what, what is so intriguing to you about this AI world and why you're getting, uh, you know, pretty excited yeah. about all the things coming out? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, thanks for having me back. It's, it's amazing. And, uh, why is this exciting to me? Well, uh, when it came out, it was pretty much December, 2022, but I started to hear about it and I, and I checked it out and I sort of had a little dabble with uh, chat GPT, which was the, which was the first sort of wave and chat GPT is a, uh, uh, a program from open AI that is like leading the wave of this AI re revolution. They've been in the press. A lot of have raised a lot of money. Uh, Microsoft just sunk 10 billion into it in Q1 of 2023. And it's a little bit of money. A little bit, a little bit. And uh, obviously then Google retaliated and Google launched their version, which is bad. And there's all these things that are coming. And then it really took off in Q2 of 2023 because open AI released and unlocked their API, 
which meant any third party developer tool programmer could get access to it. Boostly obviously jumped onto it and we now utilize it in all of our websites, which is fantastic. Wow. And wow. Um, why am I excited? For the first time ever, I feel as a startup business, small business, bootstrap business, that I have got the same powers as these massive companies that are raising tons cool. of money, i.e. Guestie, Hostaway, Airbnb. We've got the same powers in place and it is such a huge time saving tool. That's why I'm really excited about this. Um, we can go into like the pros and cons and all of those things, but massive, massive time saver tool. And also as well, the latest version, which is GPT-4, is 1,000 times more smarter than any human being on this planet. And you've wow. got it available 24 seven, literally right on your computers, right in front of your phones right now. Well, and before we get into, you know, all the tools that we can be using in our Airbnb business, and especially want to get into uh, guest guru, Airbnb guru, um, you just said something there, you know, that it's, it's smarter than any human being out there. That scares the crap out of me, man. Like, yeah. does that scare you at all? No, nah, not really. Nah, Why no. not? <laughs> I, I, I embrace it. Well, listen, there's people that fall in free, free camps. Number one, there's those that are the early adopters, the geeks of it, but will mm -hmm. just dive straight in. And I fall in that camp. And then there's ones that are absolutely against it. Like literally dig the fingers in the ears and just go, nah, this is not for me. I don't know what you're talking about. I've, I've watched too many Terminator movies to, to <laughs> yes. know what's coming. And then there's the middle, which is the sit on the fences, which they'll have a look at it. And then maybe use it, but it'll go, ah, it's not for me. And those are the free camps at the moment. And right now I'm where we're the third, the third camp right there. I'm, yeah. I'm like, I, I've used it to get like a few ideas of like, Hey, what would be a good title for my Airbnb? Or, Hey, what's a good, uh, travel plan when I'm going to Europe? Like I do it for that, but I haven't quite dove in all the way. Yeah. Well, right now we are in a position where it's impacting businesses. So it's at the business level. So if you've got a business, uh, I feel like it's impacting us. It, I live in a small village. I have 400 people who live in this village where I, where I am right now. And I guarantee you that 370 people will never have heard of AI chat GPT. If you mention it, they'll go, what's that? I know because, you know, I like to talk. I talk to a lot of people in this village and a lot of them don't even have a clue what, what it is, but it, it is coming. Um, all you have to do is look at what the big players are talking at the moment. So Apple literally a few weeks ago um, had their big event and at there they launched this new Vision Pro thing with those goggles on the front, et cetera. But during it, Tim Cook had a sit down, which is the you know CEO of, of, uh, of Apple right now. And he had a, a, had a chat with a journalist and they asked him about AI and about how Apple are adapting. And he said, explicitly quote for quote they are going to build ai into their apple devices to where the user will not even realize it is ai and that's really important amazon have already come out and said that their um, alexa devices are going to get a massive upgrade right now if you were to have a conversation with uh, alexa you can ask it a task really simply set, a, set an alarm set a timer ask them to add something to the shopping list super simple but there's no communication backwards and forth. The user experience is at a very basic level. With ChatGPT and AI, you can build it right into it to make it uh, like a really advanced user experience. And Google as well are not sleeping on this in any way, shape, shape or form. So right now it's impacting businesses. My prediction is by the end of next year, it is affecting everybody. Everybody okay. knows about it. Everybody is actively using it and it is making every single day-to-day -day task and chore super super simple okay well i'm gonna i'm gonna put the the time clock on for end of 2024 and see where we're at and if i'm now asking chat gpt to go make me dinner then uh i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna have a, a party with you because you were right now i'm, I'm just messing with you and now let's, let's kind of talk about airbnb and and how you're recommending people kind of use this what tools are out there let's First of all, I'll start though with, um, you know, a, a few weeks back, we had Ven on our show and Ven was just raving about this thing, uh, you know, guest.guru. Yeah, guest guru. Yeah. Yeah. And then he was like, well, unfortunately, though, even though it's helped me remove all my VA expenses, uh, it just shut down yesterday. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you have a little bit of the insight of to why that happened. Um, yeah. Can we start there first? 
Yeah, hundred percent. So it's guestguru.ai, and I had a little demo of this. Started a year, met one of the business development uh, reps in Nashville uh, at the uh, at the SDI WealthCon. Um, chatted to a few people there who were demoing and using it. I was like, yeah, this is amazing super cool it can take all guest communications and pretty much automatize it uh, and it and it learns the model based on your response it's brilliant it's a time saving tool it's going to be fantastic then the airbnb summer release came out and what's really important about that is that obviously airbnb were talking about rooms and we're talking about profiles and x and y and z but what they didn't talk about things are doing in the back end and they cut all uh third party communication devs uh, which guest guru got caught up in. Wow. So their whole business model was connection to Airbnb direct. Um, yeah. That killed the model. So what they had to do, they had to go away and pivot. Now they shut it down and they sold it and they've sold it to a business that has bought it. And okay. um, I was privy to the discussions that were going on behind the scenes. Um, it was offered to Boostly. <laughs> and uh, I just said, thanks, but you know, I've got my focus on X, Y, and Z, but I, I, I know the people who have bought it and they have brought it back and it is back. Nice. Um, it is back with a difference. And so what's going to happen now is that at the moment, messaging connectivity has to be by one of their Airbnb's preferred partners, which is really important. And the preferred partners at the moment are like your hospitables your Avivos, your property management software tools, basically. Yep. Okay. So the way that they're going to come back now is they're going to, instead of integrate blindly with Airbnb, they're going to integrate via the PMS platforms. So nice. it's, it's going to come back. Um, it's, it's going to be very useful, but it's going to be a little bit longer of a roadmap. But okay. what I would say is watch what the property management software systems do. So watch what a host away do, watch what a uh, guesty do, watch what, you know, um, X, Y, and Z will do, because if guest guru have been able to build it, um, there's no reason why somebody with guesty money or host away money can't also build it as, as, as well, which is interesting. And obviously Enzo connect. Um, I don't know if you've had Francois on the podcast from Enzo connect. No, I have not. Super amazing chap, 24 years old, the brightest button in this industry. And uh, what he's building with Enzo is very, very, uh, very, very clever. And he's definitely one to watch and one to, and one to get on. They are also building in ChatGPT AI within their app as well, which is guest communication platform. So it is coming. And, it, and again, it all boils down to time. I'm so excited for this because one of the biggest ball aches for hosts is the answering to messages to their yep. guests. doesn't matter whether it's, you know, you the business owner or you've outsourced it to a member of your team, even your team, having to reply to all the messages is a bar like hospitable brought in keyword based. So, you know, smart BNB, which is now hospitable, it was keyword based. So you had to put the keywords in when that keyword was mentioned, there would be a response that goes back, which is great. But what happens if a question comes back, <laughs> you know, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you still got to end up jumping in and, and, and answering that, that message. This will speed up everything. And this is where I'm something I'm really excited about. And we're literally at the infancy. The best way to describe this is the first ever iPhone that you got, right? The fir first ever iPhone model. If you compare sure. it to like iPhone 14 or whatever the latest version is now, it looks awful. We're mm -hmm. literally at the iPhone one stage right now. And uh, the beauty of it is, is that we're going to get there a lot quicker to iPhone 14 than, you know, the, the many years we've had to wait for. Awesome. I want to ask a clarifying question there. And by the way, I'd love to get an introduction to Enzo. Sounds like a guy we got to have on. Um, yeah. you, you mentioned guest guru and, and you said at one point, it sounded like you said partnering with PMSs, but then you said you think the PMSs will develop it on their own. What, what should we be looking for? Should we be looking for something like a host away making their own, or should we be looking at host away partnering with something like guest guru and adding it on as a quote unquote upsell or, or a plugin or something like that. Well, what I know about the property management softwares and, you know, I work with them all as well. We integrate with them for our websites um, is that sometimes they don't want to build it themselves. Sometimes they want to uh, just partner up with somebody who's really good. Mm -hmm. But what I also know is that there is a massive consolidation that's happening in our industry right now. Yeah. Uh, Hostaway have just had $175 million dollars pumped into their business with, with a, an investment heard about that, yeah. investment uh, guest they've obviously got a lot of money um, so what's happening is that the the 1000 property management software tools that are out there right now they're all being consolidated PSG have bought 
host away because they want to acquire. So they're going to obviously look to consolidate and, and snap up Guestia, buying up property management software companies all around the world. So um, they want to do this because they want to become the one-stop shop. Because at the moment, um, if you ask a host in the one to 20 property world, um, it's like, well, what's your tech stack looking like? And they go, well, I use uh, Guesty for host for this. And I use Price Labs for that. And I use Superhog for this. And then I go and do this and this and that. And, you know, there's loads of money being spent all over the place. So what's going to start to happen is, in my opinion, and again, this just probably won't happen. This is just me with my mystic Meg hat on here is that um, these companies will start to build in-house or acquire in-house. So um, if you were to ask me right now, I feel like it's, it's set up nicely for a host away just to build their own or acquire their mm -hmm. own. Um, obviously a company has bought a property management software tool has bought guest guru. I can't really say which one. Sure. Wouldn't expect but, it to. <laughs> but, um, but, um, but yes, yeah, so I feel like that's what what may what may happen. But this technology is very uh, intriguing to a point where it shouldn't be that hard for for somebody with a degree of developer knowledge to be able to build it. So if I'm using, let, let's even just say the the Airbnb automated tools, right? Like that's just not doing it even close to what we're talking about here. And I'm excited about this, where maybe I'm using Hostaway or Hospitable, and it's got you know some automation, but I really want to up it. Um, there's nothing available right now, but this would be available. When when could I expect something like this available for me to jump on? We're we're what we're still Q2 2023. Let's see what's happening in Q4 of this year. Mm. I mean, I know that's not that far away, but look at the advancements that we've made in such a short space of time. We're literally six months into 2023, and there's so many amazing things available. But what we can definitely go into is is how how hosts can use this tool right now to be able to respond to their guest inquiries and make it as professional as possible. If you, if you want to go down that side of route, okay. So, yeah, um, so first and foremost, there's there's two main. There's two main platforms. You either go OpenAI or Google. Uh, OpenAI is smashing it at the moment. Google and Bard is so far behind, but obviously Google has got Google data. <laughs> so there will become a case in point in time that they're, they're going to catch up or they're just going to get massively left behind. Google now um, are fighting on all fronts because their whole business model is under threat because their whole model is search and they've got to put out a lot of fires at the moment before they even start to, to, to think about this. But Google's Google, right? But I'm going to focus on, on open AI because chat GPT is, is a phenomenally powerful tool. You've got Perfect. two versions. You've got 3.5. That's free. So you can go on now type. Um, let me get the domain quickly for you. It's chat.openai.com. So chat.openai.com. You go in and it's free to use. It's version 3.5. Alex Harmozy, which is a is a fun, fantastic entrepreneur, I follow him on Instagram. He did a he did a little graphic, small little circle like there, and a massive circle like here, like gigantic circle. The small one was three point five, and the gigantic one is is four. So GPT four, which is over here. Now GPT four is only available to the pro plan, and you have to pay only twenty dollars a month. But it is phenomenally better if you pay that little bit extra, you get a whole lot more for it, and um. The best thing that you could do as, as a host right now is to start playing with GPT-4. Um, and what you can do is you can sign up an account, pay $20 a month, and you can give your, if you've got a team, if you've hired out, you've got some virtual assistants that you work with within your business, you can give access to that. And the main way that people make a mistake when they start using this platform is they are um, not paying attention to their tabs. And the tabs is the thing on the left-hand side. So whenever you type in new chat, you ask a new question, that's a new tab. That's a new conversation. The, okay. AI, the AI at the moment, open AI at the moment, doesn't, doesn't learn your whole conversations, your whole tabs, your whole, your whole thread. What you have to do is you have to start it every single time. So the best thing that you could do, first and foremost, is have your tabs and reorganize them. So if you've got five properties, what you would do is you have tab number one, open it up, start a new chat, and you would train the bot to memorize everything about property number one. So let's just call it the White House. 
Okay, so you're going to say, okay, uh, my name is Mark Simpson. Uh, I am the owner of the White House. It is based in Fresno. Uh, it sleeps five people. It's got three bedrooms. You basically would just give it all the information you can think of. If you want to cheat, you can just copy and paste your Airbnb description, paste it into chat GPT and just say, learn this, right? Okay. Then what you're going to do is any um, SOPs that you have. So any frequently asked questions, yep. um, anything you've got documented from guests, copy and paste that in. And, and this is still just in one tab. This is in one tab. Okay. Right? So you're, you're basically training this tab up, this bot all around the White House. Then what you're going to do is you're going to open up a second tab and call it the Red House. Same, repeat. Any information you've got, just say, hey, my name is Mark Simpson, owner of the Red House. The overall company is called Boostly B&B. Uh, this one sleeps six people. It's got da 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 And then you're just training it. And then you've got five different tabs for five different properties, say. When a question comes in, okay, if it comes in on Airbnb or it comes in direct or an email or a social media question, your team is there to respond. Now, if you've got people that uh, are overseas, maybe English isn't their first language, isn't their strongest language, and mm -hmm. say that you, as, as a host, you're always wary with the uh, response that they are getting. You want it to be as professional as possible to yeah. give that guest or that future potential guest the best experience. You can get them to use ChatGPT, get them to paste in the question and say, please answer this based upon my wow. FAQ and my SOPs, yeah. and it will, boom, give you a message, and they just copy and paste paste it in. They don't have to ask you the question because the SOPs are already there. You've already created them. Your team's already created them. It's already in there. So it saves you having to respond. It saves you being dragged into the weeds of the business. And the person who's your, on your customer service support team, your guest success team, they know that they're going to get an answer based on, on the SOPs. Super powerful, done within literally seconds. Now, that's the only difference there, right? Is I actually have to have someone plug that question into OpenAI. It won't connect with Airbnb and respond for me like Guest Guru could do. No, basically, the, okay. what Guest Guru was doing is it was doing all of that for you and it was training yeah. it for you. So you would just paste in your, your yeah. Airbnb link and details and stuff. So this is the one step away, you know, yeah. until it's created, this is the one step away and yeah. it's a small step. So guest guru, let's be honest, could literally, um, especially when they're changing this back up to, to being even better and being different, uh, being more friendly with Airbnb and the PMSs, it, it can literally replace VAs, right? Let's be honest. And I, I hate to talk about eliminating jobs, but at the, at the end of the day, we're, we're looking for the best way to be able to run our business, the leanest way to run our business. It could literally, for me and my business, eliminate $4,000 per month worth of expenses, but this, we still have to have that person who is actually there and doing it. So it solves a different problem for right now, which is just the professionalism, right? Getting the right answers to people. That's a, a continual grind. Even if you have a company manual and I'll tell you, you know, I talk about our company manual all the time. It has the SOPs, it has the answers, it has everything, but still things get messed up. And that little thing every once in a while that we weren't expecting happens. And if we can put that into, uh, you know, an open AI a chat GPT tab like this and have all those questions answered, that's even better. A, a follow-up question that I have. Well, first of all, I have all that right, right? Am I, am I giving a good summary of that? Yeah, 100%. I think the, the thing to, to remember is that this will not replace your VAs. It will yeah. elevate them. Because the, the way the best way to de to describe it is that when they're answering a question, it's the reason why you stop doing that and you hire is because you want to stop doing the working in the weeds of the business yep. so you can work on the business. So you hire somebody to do that, right? And they then have to deal with all of these questions that you know technically a robot could could answer. So by doing this, you're eliminating eighty percent of their workload. So that means you can free them up to do. Um, proactive marketing for you. I talk about it a lot. You know, uh, um, I call it the guest success manager. Uh, when they've got the time free, they can be reaching out to local businesses. They could be uh, looking to network. They could look to, to, to create relationships, et cetera. This is not going to replace jobs. This is going to elevate jobs. And But the thing is, what will happen is it will get rid of the crap. Yeah. So if you are a crap VA, I would be worried for your job. The cream always rises to the top. 
And yeah, you will be able to save some costs instead of paying four grand, you can maybe pay two grand, for example, uh, and then put that other two grand into, you know, maybe Facebook or Google ads, et cetera. Again, proactive marketing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely not going to be a job killer. It'll be an, a, a job elevator for a lot of your staff. I like it. Uh, the next question I have is guest guru. One of the things I know about that is it would actually look into previous conversations about that property and learn from it and apply answers based on that. No feature like that in open AI, I'm assuming. Well, every time you go into the tab and every time you paste in the question, that's yeah. being used by the, the guest, you are training that bot up. So I could manually upload that, but yeah, it, it would take that step. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. Um, Okay, so is this the only one that you're using is, or is there anything else about this uh, chat GPT that we need to know about? Every tool that I'm going to talk about today is is powered with chat GPT. This is okay. basically the, the, the source. This is where you go. But obviously, the reason why they opened up their API is that they needed data. They need as much data points as possible being fed into the ultimate machine. And they know that having somebody to go to a specific website every single day, that's not going to happen. So why not just open it up so it can go on every tool? Like, for example, right now, uh, Loom. I assume a lot of people watching this will use Loom.com. Uh, try recording a Loom video. You'll see, and this is the thing that Tim Cook was talking about, it will be in the solutions that you're already using without even you realize it's being used. So if you go and record a video on Loom right now, whether you're documenting to a member of your team or you are you know, need to send some off to a guest or whatever, when you record a Loom video in the past, you'd have to go and put the title in. Loom's automatically generating the title yep. for you. It's automatically generating the summary. It's automatically putting the transcript in. And talking about that, um, when we talk about SOPs and, and playbooks and stuff, people instantly get overwhelmed and they go, oh, I can't do this. It's too long. If you want to create an SOP in literally seconds, record a Loom video. So whatever you want to show your member of staff, like this is how you upload a list into Airbnb. This is how you change something in guest. This is how you do X, Y, and Z. Record a Loom of you doing it. The loom gets recorded, go to the transcript button, tap on tra transcript to get the transcription, click copy, come into chat GPT, open up a new tab and say, okay, I need for you to create me an SOP based on uh, this transcription from this loom video, paste in the loom video, and it will create an SOP for you within literally seconds. Have you heard of Tango? Tango? Yeah. Uh, what you just described, I was in a room yesterday. Apparently, Tango does all of that for you in, in one. So you don't have to, as soon as you record the loom or it, record the screen share, it actually makes the SOP for you as soon as you're done recording. So you don't even have to copy anything or transcript anything. Like, And that's how quickly this industry is moving, right, Mark? Like, I just heard about this yesterday. So I thought that that's where you're yeah, heading. I'm, but... I'm, I'm, I'm on the website now, yeah. So yeah, even, yeah. That, even that, it does it for you. Yeah. Um, there's tons and tons and tons of solutions. The one Crazy. thing that a good friend of mine said, um, he was uh, he was going to be on the Boosted podcast. He's from a company called AI Adaptive. He said, whenever you come across a company that is using or claims to be using AI, because it's a big buzzword, there's so many startups at the moment, go to their LinkedIn company page, go click on people, right? And go and look to see the people that are, are within the company. You need to make sure that there are actual proper developers that are within that company and not just somebody who's saying it for the sake of, um, you know, fancy marketing spin. Sure. So yeah, I'll go and go and dig into tango, but from the, from the offside, it looks pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to hear what you have to say about that. Okay. So at least we know through loom that's legitimate and through chat GPT, we can yeah. make an SOP, which I love that. Um, so many talks I have with students that are like, I just don't have time to sit there and type out things like that's going to change the way they do business. And that's super exciting. Um, what's another tool that you're using? So uh, I want to talk onto these third party tools now. Scott. I think we, we spent a lot, a lot of time talking about chat GPT uh, within open AI, but obviously the beauty of this is, is now with the open API is that third party tools can, can use it. And one is Monica. Uh, so it's Monica dot, I am so M O N I C A dot I am. And um, every tool that I recommend to people, I test it first myself. And uh, if there's a tool that I use every day, um, then that's the one that's always going to be first ones that I recommend. And Monica is one that I use every single day. And the best way to describe it is 
if you want to use GPT, chat GPT, you have to go to a specific site. But with Monica, it follows you around the internet. And now mm. there's actually a desktop app as well. So right now in the, in the right-hand corner of my screen, there is a little winky face looking at me, and that is Monica. And at any point, I can tap on the button or I can do c command and Q and Monica pops up. Also as well, say that I'm reading a blog post or I'm watching a YouTube video. Uh, I can ask Monica to summarize for me. I can ask her to translate it for me and ask, wow. and ask her to rewrite it. So a rewrite would be uh, rewrite this blog post, but in the style of Mark Simpson of Boostly. So I can do it as a LinkedIn post to make me look clever. <laughs> you know, oh, or Facebook. And, uh, you know, it is, um, again, a free Mium service. So it's free to a point. So you get like yeah. 30 different commands and questions a, a month. And then after that, you have to pay. But the cool thing is, is that they're doing the whole Dropbox thing where if you recommend a friend with your unique referral, they'll give you more questions and credits every single month. I've so now I'm thinking about this in two different ways. Um, one, let's, let's keep it close to home first. If I, if I am a host, right. And I make a nice welcome video for my guests, but I know I always have international, uh, guests as well, maybe China and let's call it, you know, um, a lot from, from Italy, right. Yeah, exactly. Um, could I take that, that video, have Monica watch it and then essentially transcribe it through audio or just through text how, and, and then maybe re-upload it as a different version in that. I'm, I'm trying to think of how I could use yeah. that to maybe yes, help my guests that at international. Yeah. Let's give that one. That's a good one. Okay. So say you've got an international guest. I'm going to give you another domain in a second. You can maybe put okay. this up on the screen. Um, you recorded uh, a, a Loom video or a video of yourself um, introducing the property of the business and saying hello, right? Mm -hmm. You can yep. upload that video to YouTube, to your company YouTube channel. Right. You could even put it as unlisted, right? And then what you can do is you can get the transcription of that video. So every video that gets uploaded to YouTube now has a, has a transcription as well, automatically done. You can take this, the, the transcription and go to this website. It's called synthesia.io. So that one for me. S Y N. T H E S I A dot I O. Now, what you do on this domain is it is a hundred percent an AI actor. You just got to give it the transcript, the script. So you will go onto it and you will paste in the transcription. You will choose your AI actor of choice. You will cho choose your language of choice. So you could mm. do a Asian woman uh, with uh, uh, you know Asian language or an Italian man with Italian language and it will take your transcription and it will translate for you and the video will be uploaded and right. you can then send that video to if anybody uh, books from those areas, welcome into the business, etc. And just imagine from a guest experience point of view, they get a video in their native language uh, that is welcoming, which, uh, you know, you could even personalize it to a point as well, which would be pretty, pretty cool. And again, Synthesia is $25 a month um, and it ranges from how many videos you want to create. But again, wow. very, very cost effective. So yeah, things like that. Um, very, 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 very powerful. Um, well, yeah, I mean, shoot, if, if I were to hire an actor who <laughs> speaks a different language and have them shoot a video, uh, it would cost me thousands and we can get that for $25 a month at the, you know, basically click of a couple buttons. That's, that's crazy, man. It's yeah. crazy. Um, this is, uh, okay. This is what we're getting. I mean, the, the, the main, the main thing here is that there are tools to go and play with. I mean, the mm -hmm. thing that I want everybody to do, and again, it doesn't matter what side of the fence you're sat on. There's free buckets that we put you in. Remember the ones that are the geeks that are already in this, like with me and, you know, we're chatting about on a day to day. There's ones that are like burying their head in the sands and there's ones in the middle. I'm never going to talk to the ones that are burying their heads in the sands. That's cool. That's fine. It's the ones that are on the fence and the ones that are geeking out. Just go, and give it a play. Go. Uh, the thing that I recommend to everybody, and I've, I've just done five days training of this uh, with the Boostly community. We did five days of, of AI training. It was just make sure that your homepage is saved as open AI. Make sure that every time you open a tab on your computer, it automatically loads up open AI. And you're training the brain to go and use it every single day. Have right. Monica on there. So, you know, you're asking yeah. her questions and, and getting them to do things because Monica as well can also reply to your emails. 
Wow. So it sits in Gmail. Uh, you know, we all know what the state of our inbox looks like. Uh, mm -hmm. We open up an email and it's a really long paragraph. It could be a guest. It could be an investor. It could be a whatever, right? And all you can do is you can do quick reply. Tap Monica, quick reply. She will read the email. She will read the whole thread, right? And then you'll and then she'll give you three options on how she will respond for you. You'll do wow. like passive or humor or stern or, or whatever you want to choose from. And then she will craft a reply. You then just hit insert and send and it will send for you. Wow. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it all boils down to a time saving because we all complain. We haven't got a lot of time. We haven't got a lot of time. I would love to do this Kyle, but I just haven't got the time. This eliminates any excuse for time. Does Monica have a smart ass button? Because I like to reply sometimes that way. I'm sure you can train. <laughs> Oh man. All right, Mark, uh, we're running out of time here. So is there one tool that we have not talked about that you think is important for everyone to know? Uh, Monica, I think Monica and just chat GPT are the two main ones. I've thrown in Synthesia. That's a nice little juicy, juicy bonus one. I think if you want to look at the future, if you want to look at the future of where we're heading to next, this whole 2024 vision that I was talking about, uh, there's one that's called Adept. So um, A- D E P T dot A I. So adept dot AI. And the reason why this is important is that somebody at some point in the future is going to create a to do list app that does your to do list for you. This is automated uh, GPT that we're talking about now. Okay. There's a couple of different versions that are kicking around, but they're crap. I've played around with them. I've done the pro version. It's not enough. It's not good enough for me to talk about. But adept is, is one that is on my wait list and wish list. I want everybody to go to it, go look at the funding that they've had. They've had a lot of money invested into them and go look at the blog post that they've put out because when this happens, um, and the example that they give is a, is a, an investment one and a real estate investor, which is you know, instantly brought me back to our world of hospitality is that you can go on Zillow, um, or Redfin or any of these sites and you'll, there'll be a little box that pops up and you will go search this website and find me the best four bed properties that is, you know, located a hundred meters away from the hospital that has got yada, 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 if it works within my budget. Right. And it will, you can go and make a coffee, come back and it will done it for you. You can then take that and go to say air DNA, right. And you go, right, run these numbers through here. Does it make sense with, with the market? And it will do it for you within minutes. And then you can take that and go to say a Google sheet. If you've got the calculators in there and go, right, well, this generate me 25% cash on cash returns. It will do this all you within 10 minutes. Wow. And that's what's coming next. It's like automated GPT. So if you want to look to the future, that's what I'm talking about. And um, that's what I will say about that. My biggest tip for everybody right now is to not bury your head in the sand, go and have a look at it, but also as well, pay massive attention to the rates that you are pushing out to the OTAs. Mm. Because next year, when just imagine Google Home or Amazon Alexa or your, your Siri on your watch and on your phone, uh, when they upgrade these software so it is more AI, uh, like communicative, you could literally pick up your phone and go, right, Siri, find me uh, a place in Nashville that is 100 meters away from downtown. That is my budget's $200 a night. You know what I like because it knows everything about you. Uh, it's got to be maximum of, uh, you know, two beds. Um, it needs Wi-Fi. Go and search. And it will go and search the internet. It doesn't care about branding. It doesn't care about brand loyalty. It doesn't care about Airbnb, Expedia, wow. Google, or anything. It doesn't care. All it is going to do is going to find the best place with the best price and bring it back to the user. So with that being said, if you are pricing smartly, i.e. have the best rate when they book direct and bring it all the way back to direct bookings, if you have the best rate when you book direct, guess which page and which website that device, that AI robot is going to send the user to. It's going to send them to your website, right? It's going to send them to your place where they can book with you direct. So this is why it's super important. You've got to watch what Google are doing on this. I had a, uh, a call with Google today. It was under NDA, so I can't say anything about it, but watch what Google are going to do next. You've got to make sure your pricing is sorted. So the best rates are when you book direct. I love it, man. Uh, I mean, I feel like even though we were only talking for 35 minutes, this is some of the most value that uh, we've been able to give our audience for free uh, in just about any podcast. So thank you so much. Um, and, and guys, like if you're not a part of the Boostly community, please 
go become a part of it. Um, Mark, talk about that for a second. And also what else do you have going on that you want people to know about? Yeah. Um, so yeah, please do come and book in a call. Um, we're, we're basically on a mission to help 1 million hosts grow their hospitality businesses without the reliance of, of Airbnb, Booking.com and, and Verbo. Uh, go on Boostly.co.uk. It's literally on my chest. B-O-O-S-T-L-Y.co.uk. Go book a demo and see how we can help you. Um, what's coming up? We've got some really cool uh, podcasts coming up. We do free, free podcasts a week. And we've got one coming up next week where we talk to all of the vendors in the industry about 20 of them and ask what they're doing with AI. So that's a real cool episode that's coming out and we've got uh, a lot more as well. So it's Boostly on the YouTube channel. I'll just type in Boostly, uh, just Boostly podcast in Google search and it will come up. Awesome. Mark Simpson, you're the man. Thank you so much for helping our audience to conquer the world of short-term rentals and especially AI today. We're going to keep it now in the six figure formula to answer some questions. Thanks brother. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. Okay. Um, so we're, we're a couple hours later than we usually do these. So I think we don't have as many people on right now. So um, if we do have anyone on that has a question for Mark, please go ahead and drop it now. Uh, Jeremy did just give a little shout out to you. He said um, that he's all the time looking into AI and just took Mark's AI boot camp last week. Uh, so many great nuggets and great products out there. I'm constantly Googling AI for dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Um, Awesome. Thanks for sharing, Jeremy. Um, so uh, Mark is also in the group here, guys. So if you have an additional question afterward, you're watching the replay, just go ahead and tag him. And I'm sure he would love to get you an answer. But um, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Tag, tag me if there's any questions. I know it's like a lot. It's a lot to take on this. Uh, but it's please do. Just, just type, tag me in the group. I'm in the group. Uh, I think you'll either tag me by Mark Simpson or just do Boostly. And I think one of them will come up. Tag, tag me in. I'm, and I'm more than happy to help answer. Yeah. I, and, I, and that's just a really good point there too. Like it took me forever to transition our podcast to StreamYard from Zoom and look at how much better this looks. And the whole reason I didn't do it guys was because like I had heard about StreamYard and I was just so nervous about like, well, what if I get on there and what if like something goes wrong live? And, and I just like was in this place of, of fear of doing it. And then when I did it, I was like, this is the easiest thing. This is easier than Zoom. Like I love this thing. So I find that a lot of these technologies, we get scared to like even use it because of the same reasons we're talking about right now. Like, oh, well, what if, what if it gives the wrong answer to a VA and then the VA copies it and sends it. And now, you know, with the guest complains about communication, well, you know what, you won't know until you try. So why don't you just go and try it, try out, uh, any of these open AI, Monica.im, Synthesia, Adept, yeah. try to use any of them and just, just like put that fear to rest by taking some action. Um, all right, Mark. Thanks brother. I'm gonna let you go hit the sack and, uh, have a good night. All right. Again, we've got all of those tools that Mark talked about in the YouTube description or in the podcast show notes. If you're on the podcast, that's going to do it for us here on the fearless investor podcast. We're helping you to conquer the world of short-term rentals. We'll see you next time.